Okay, I'm going to work an additional rope type problem for you, a rope and pulley problem. And this is problem 2 198. Uh, it was not assigned for homework, but it's uh, maybe just a little harder than one you were assigned for homework. And it says we have this rope configuration right here. Um, and we're going to be pulling here at a certain speed, 5 meters per second, pulling at point A. And we're going to want to know the velocity of the block at B. And so the problem statement says, if end A of the rope moves downward with a speed of 5 meters per second, determine the speed of the cylinder B. Now what we want to do then is write rope length equations that must be true and then see what they say to us. So let's take the picture and first of all we'll create datums and I can zoom in just a little bit that might make this helpful. And so we have two upper pulleys, neither of which are traveling. So let's use the center of those two pulleys as our datum line. And then we'll measure the location of everything that's moving. Uh, we'll measure it from there. Now, looking at this picture and this picture, it appears they've shortened up this rope and sort of trimmed it to there. Does that matter if we moved the block up to here instead of leaving it down there? No, they're going to travel at the same speed because every point along that rope is traveling at the same speed. I'm not sure why the author did that, did their solution, but there's no harm in it. So going back to this one, just to make it a little bit clearer though, we're going to put that block B hanging right there. Now, first of all, let's locate using our datums all of the moving things. So here is our distance from the datum to block B. We do have a lower stationary pulley here that does need to be located relative to the datum, and so we'll measure that distance as A. Um, this one is a traveling pulley. Although right now it's sitting right next to this pulley, it, this one does in fact travel, okay? And so we will label this one SA, which is different than this A, because that A is a constant. This changes with time. And then we have this intermediate pulley C. And now let's note how many ropes we have. We have a rope that starts here, travels down and under, up and over, down and under, up and over, and ends there. We've got one very long rope. And then we've got a rope that goes from this traveling pulley to down and around this traveling pulley and up connecting to the center of that pulley and it stops. So we have two different ropes. And so um, looking at our long rope, we can say that this long rope has a distance SB plus A plus A plus SC plus SC or SB plus 2 of that constant distance A plus 2 SC SB 2 SAs 2 SCs is equal to the length of rope number one and that's a constant and it involves some constants here okay there's one equation now our re remaining rope here has a length this is distance appears to be a but don't let it confuse you this is a moving pulley this distance is SA plus this remaining distance which is SA minus SC. Okay, and I'm just looking over here at how the author, author wrote it. So, SA here plus that remaining distance plus SA minus SC is equal to an L2. 
Okay, let's look at what the author wrote for these equations. First of all, for the long rope, SB plus 2A plus 2SC is equal to L1. That's exactly what we wrote. But we can take the 2A, which is a constant, and move it to the other side. But all of this is still just a constant. And then our second rope, SA plus SA minus SC, is also equal to a constant. And so this can become 2SA minus SC. We do the algebra. Now, looking at the picture, we would, relate, we would like to relate SB and SA. And, and or looking at the one that's better labeled, we'd like to relate SB to SA here and get rid of SC from the equations. So what we can do is take, say, uh, let's see, our second equation didn't, oh, it involves, yes, it involves SC. So we could take, say, this equation and solve for SC and plug it into here. Or we can, and vice versa, we can solve this equation for SC in terms of everything else and plug it into here. Do that algebra. Either way we do that to eliminate SC from the equation, we will end up with this. Okay, an equation that involves SB, SA, and all this constant stuff, which is really just a single constant. We don't care about the details of that constant. Now, that's our position equation. If we take a time derivative of this thing, then time derivative of SV, SB is VB. The time derivative of 4SA is 4 velocity A, and the time derivative of all of those constants is a zero. And so, we were told that VA is 5 meters per second. We can plug that into there. And from our equation, learn that VB plus 4 times 5, which is 20, equals 0. Our VB is equal to minus 20 meters per second. Okay? And that means the B quantity is getting shorter as time goes by, being negative. So that B quantity getting shorter as time goes by says B is going up because we declared on all of these variables that down is positive or these getting longer heading downward is positive so if this is heading down so SA is a positive number heading down and this one's heading up now I also suggested that we could use a uh, power in equal power out idea or a rope tension idea to come up with the same basic stuff at least the relationship of 4 to 1 here or the 4 to 1 here relationship by thinking about rope tension and we in general won't have to solve two equations two unknowns to do that in a more complicated system let me zoom out just a touch on this, and let's try that. So I'm going to pick this spot right there and say that that has a tension T. Therefore, this following this rope through, that's a tension T. Following it through, the rope has the same tension because all ropes along their length have the same tension, which means that has a tension T which means this has a tension T. So all the way along the long rope, we'll assume that the tension in that rope is T. Now, um, let's look at the other rope. Because of this, the tension in this rope to balance this 2T the tension in this rope must be 2t. Therefore, following this rope, the tension in this rope must be 2t. Therefore, the tension in the rope here must be 4t. 
Now, so what I can write is the four times the velocity. So I'll ignore the t's now. It's the four and the one. Because that really is a one t. So I can say four VA has to be balanced by one V B. Now, is that the same thing that I said from the rope length equation? VB has a 1, VA has a 4, but I made no, but this one is mathematically precise and gives me the sign. Okay? I made no attempt to worry about signs here. I just know that the magnitude of VA and the magnitude of VB are related by a 4 to 1 ratio. And in, in using this method, it doesn't tell me what moves up and what moves down. Okay, but I would presume that as this one moves down, it's going to force this one to move down, which would force this one to move upward. So I can look at it and figure out what the directions are. But I got the 4 to 1 ratio out of this rope tension analysis. And I didn't have to solve two equations, two unknowns to make that happen. That would end this example.